Major and minor chords are the most common, useful and foundational chords to start learning first on piano. You're going to end up using these in some way for pretty much whatever kind of music you want to play. We need to start working towards getting these foundational chords completely fluent so you can find them and recognise them starting from any note automatically without having to think about it. Thinking of them as one shape. Think about how we read words. We don't look at every individual letter. We recognize the whole word as one thing and it's much quicker that way. There's 12 of each of those types of chords, so that's 24 things to memorize, but we can start limiting how much you actually have to memorize by just learning the 12 majors and then learning how to change them into minor. It's really helpful to split them into four groups of three by shape and then learn one group at a time. So just having those organized in those groups and learning one group at a time gives you manageable chunks to work on. We're just talking about root position shapes here, which if you don't know is like the original chord position. It has one of each note in order starting from the root and the root is just the note that the chord is named after. I'm gonna go through these major chord groups first and then the minors, talk about some tips for recognizing them and ways you can practice. There's timestamps below for each section. The first group is the three major chords that only use white notes and that is C major, F major and G major. I'm not really gonna focus on technique here, but just a quick word on fingers. You, you end up using all different kinds of fingers in actual music, depends where you've just come from, where you're going to as to what's gonna make sense. But I would recommend just sticking to one thing at the moment. You could either do one, three, and five, or one, two, and four. I'm just using one, two, and three here because it helps me keep my hand out of the way of your view. The second group is the three chords that have, when they're in root position, have a black note in the middle. It's kind of form a triangle shape if you connected the dots. That is D major, E major, and A major. And just as a reminder, whilst these shapes appear different on the keyboard, the spacing between the notes is identical even though the chords look like a different shape. If you count the amount of half steps between these chords, you'll see what I mean. That's why they're the same type of chord. They use the same intervals and to learn more about that and to approach building chords, check out my previous video linked in the description below. The spacing between the root and the middle note for a major chord when in root position is four half steps. And it's probably quicker to see that by jumping two whole steps. So if you're in doubt when you're about to play one of these, you can check that. We call that note in the middle the major third. The one that sometimes gets people here is E major because in the head people are thinking oh there's a black key in the middle. They sometimes either do that or that by accident. So a useful thing is before you even think about the exact notes, just keep a sketch of the shape of the chord in your mind. So all of these chords, whilst not perfectly even, they are kind of roughly uh, symmetrical. So when you play an E major, that's pretty much in the middle, that note. This now has, is a much more of a lopsided shape. We've got two notes squished together here and a big gap there, and the same the other way around if you play that note. So remember it's kind of symmetrical. As well as learning theory and stuff, playing piano is a very tactile thing. We've got to get used to the visual side and the feel of these shapes. The next group is the three major chords that go black, white, black. So it's kind of like an upside down triangle shape. And that's D flat major or it might be called C-sharp major sometimes, E-flat major, might be called D-sharp major other times, and A-flat major, which might possibly be called G-sharp major as well. If we just use those flat names a sec, if we think about those last two groups, D, E, and A major, were like that, white, black, white, D-flat, E-flat, and A-flat major, were the other way around, black, white, black. And the last group then is three chords that all have unique shapes. This is the only major chord that only has black notes in it. So we could either call that G flat major or F sharp major. If we call it G major, imagine a G being flattened like that. If we call it F sharp major, imagine an F being sharpened. And then the last two are B flat major and B major. Now these go opposite. So B major is white, black, black and B flat major is black, white, white. And again, remember they look different, but the spacing between the notes is identical. And here's another handy tip that works for both the major and minor chords. The outside notes of these chords when they're in root position is always a perfect fifth, which is three and a half whole steps away. But the handy thing about perfect fifths is, apart from when we start on B flat and B, 
they're always matching colors. So if you get used to the feel of that distance, how that looks and how that feels under your fingers, that's a really helpful thing to give you the framework for the outside of these chords. And this is helpful when we get to minor chords as well. So um, a fifth of all the white notes is this distance like this. You can see it's the same distance of white notes each time. And when you practice this a bit, that a sixth just feels too big and the one before it, a fourth feels too small and you get to the point where that feels just right. And when we start from black keys, the feel of the distance is the same, except they're now matching black notes. So these are all fifths here, like this. And then we've just got to remember to watch out for these opposite colored places when we start from B or B flat. Once you have a major chord memorized, you can then adjust the pattern like I'm about to show you to turn it into a minor chord. You don't need to start learning all 12 major chords before starting on the minors. In fact, you'll probably find learning both types starting from the white keys more useful and more common as a beginner. When we're playing these in root position like this, all we're gonna do to turn this into a minor chord is lower that middle note by a half step. Now the middle note is only three half steps or one and a half whole steps from the root, but remember the outside notes are the same. The note we had before in the major chord, we'd call that a major third. And now the one we've moved it to is now called the minor third. So C major, F major and G major then turn into the triangle shapes with the black key in the middle. C major becomes C minor, F major becomes F minor, G major becomes G minor. The three major chords that had a black key in the middle, when you turn them into minor chords, they all become white notes. So D major, move that a half step down, moves to a white note, becomes D minor. E major becomes E minor, move that down a half step. And A major becomes A minor. So in those two groups, they all kind of switch around. If we look at the next group, turning D flat major into minor, we've got another white note in the middle here. That's because when we move that down a half step, there's no black key in between. So we still get the same kind of looking shape. And that's gonna happen again with A flat major. Moving that note down there, we get this because there's no black key in the middle there. You might encounter some funny spellings here, whether you call it A flat or G sharp. We're not gonna focus on the spellings at the moment. I have got a video up on how to spell chords and scales as well, you can check out. We're kind of primarily focusing on just visualizing the notes at the sec. If we look at E flat minor though, well, when we had E flat major, if we lower that by a half step now, this time we actually get a black key in the middle. And this happens to be the only minor chord that only has black notes in it. E flat or D sharp minor. And the last group then, G flat major goes from all black keys to black, white, black. If we put that third down a half step. B flat minor looks like this. If we convert major, put the third down a half step. And B major was like this. If we convert that to minor, move the third down a half step. So we've got a couple of random shapes again then. But like I said, if you just work on memorizing the major chords, then that one trick to changing to minor, when you get good at seeing that pattern shift quickly, it automatically gives you 12 more chords without having to actually memorize 12 more individual things. And the good thing is you can extend that to when you learn different kinds of chords too. Every new pattern you learn gives you 12 new chords and it limits the amount of things you have to memorize. So practicing these on your own then, I would suggest to start off by doing one group at a time. And you could even just start with literally just going up and down. Moving through the chords up and down like that. Do that at your own pace. Try and get a little bit quicker for a challenge. Maybe put a metronome on to try and force yourself to find the next one quicker. Or you could even put a drum track on. You could get creative and come up with some kind of rhythm pattern to make it more interesting. You could try breaking the notes up too. And then make, try this in the next group as well, D, E, and A. Again, try the same tactics, come up with a rhythm, force yourself to do it quicker, and then do that through each of the groups. Then try mixing groups together. You could perhaps do the white notes and then the triangle shapes, mix the triangle shapes with the upside down triangle shapes, mix and match to try and challenge yourself. Focus more on any weaker groups or weaker specific chords. And eventually try and go through all of them. And um, here's a couple of tactics when you're doing basically anything when you're trying to hit all 12 keys. Uh, a good way to do it is to move up in half steps. So start from C, start from D flat, start from D. So you go C major, 
D flat major, D major, E flat major, E major, and so on. And then you could repeat that with minor chords. And this one's really good because it really gets you used to how those shapes morph. Um, depending on where you start. So as you're doing that, basically each note that you're playing moves up by the same amount. And you imagine if something moves up by the same amount, the spacing between the things that you move is gonna stay the same. And when the spacing is the same, that means it's the same type of chord. A couple of other ways to hit every key is to move around something called the circle of fifths. If we move a chord up a fifth each time, it's actually going to end up hitting all 12 keys and come back round to the beginning. To save constantly getting higher and higher or running off the edge, you can just change the octave. So if you look at the circle of fifths, I'll put that up on the screen. It would be C and then G and then D and then A and then E and then B and, and so on. You could do that backwards as well, which is actually moving around in fourths. We sometimes call that the circle of fourths too. Or you could try doing the chords from just the white notes and then just the black notes. So C major, D major, E major, F, G, A, B, and then the same from the black keys. And lastly, one more thing you could try, you could try doing major and then minor. So C major, C minor, D major, D minor, E major, E minor, and so on. Just little things to challenge yourself to find these shapes quickly. You don't have to do this for ages, and occasionally, if you're ever using these chords, um, when you're actually playing music and you find yourself stuttering, over when you're using them, perhaps it's time to take uh, a quick five minutes um, a few times in a week for a little bit just to brush up on your fundamentals.